In this fast-paced world of data engineering where new tools and technologies emerge almost every other day, it's very easy to get caught up in technical complexities and get confused between what matters and what does not. There is one concept that often gets overlooked by even the more experienced or professional data engineers. And if you are new to this data engineering field, then it's very important for you to understand this concept from start, from the very beginning so that you can implement them in your pipeline, which can save you hours or even days of your time somewhere down the line. So let's talk about one thing that every data engineer must know, but most don't. I'm Josh and I'm an AI engineer at Google and previously a data engineer. And today we are deep diving into data lineage and metadata management and how it is essential for every data engineer because it can take your work to a whole new level. And not just that, we are also going to talk about different tools and technologies available today from which you can implement them very easily. But before we jump right in, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That will keep me motivated and keep making videos like this that will make your life as a data engineer or as a future data engineer easy. Let's talk about the problem, the black box of data pipeline. So in today's complex data landscape, there are often so many different data sources. It transforms through different systems and tools and finally it gets curated. Without data lineage and management, your data pipeline kind of becomes like a black box, leaving you unable to answer questions like, where did this data come from? What different transformations were applied? Is this data even accurate and up to date? Who is the owner of this data? Let's talk about the solution. If I explain data lineage in a simple layman terms, it basically tracks history of your data. It checks where the data came from, what different things were applied on it, and where is it going? Metadata management, it's about tracking different metadata or additional information about your data. It can contain information like meaning, structure, quality, ownership, and more. At a high level, there are three types of metadata. One is a technical metadata, it's, it's the simple one. So it talks about what different columns are there, what are the keys, and all that. Now, second type of metadata is business metadata. It talks about who is the data owner, who is the data steward, who is responsible for refreshing this data source, what are the glossary terms or business meaning of short forms or any specific terms used in your data sets. It also contains information about any PII or sensitive data that you want to track in your data assets. And then third type of metadata is operational metadata. So it tracks access logs, which uh, helps you see who accessed this data and when. It also tracks frequency of data usage that helps you identify the tables which are most used versus the tables which are least used. It can also contain data quality logs or data change or schema change logs. So now that we know the basic definition of what is data lineage and metadata, let's understand why we cannot ignore them. So let's talk about their benefits. Number one is troubleshooting and root cause analysis. So imagine if you have a very complex data pipeline and it breaks down somewhere. So without data lineage, it becomes super challenging to find out what went wrong. But with data lineage, you can trace it back to when the problem occurred. So if you find the root cause, the script that made the problem or the data change that made the problem, if you fix that, it will create a domino effect and it will fix all the subsequent scripts. Another use case for metadata is data governance and compliance. So most of the companies, they deal with confidential PII data, which has to be masked or it has to be transformed in a different form so that they are not misused. It can contain information like user's name, email address or physical address and much more. And these companies often have third party auditors who check whether the correct policies or security settings are applied on this data. If you have correct metadata that identifies which columns create PII data by using proper tags, and if you create column masking or row masking policy based on those tags, it becomes very easy for you to show that data to a third party auditor and get your governance and compliance check complete very quickly. Next is impact analysis. So a lot of times you might want to make a small change in a business logic in your data pipeline somewhere in the middle. But with the help of data lineage, you know specific what data sets and what jobs will be affected. And you can just review those things instead of reviewing every other thing in your data pipeline. And then one more benefit is collaboration and knowledge sharing. Have you ever been in a situation where you look at a data model or a data source and you just cannot make out what does this column mean? If you have a place that has the definition of those terms more like glossary, it will make your 
data onboarding journey much more easier. Now let's get practical and talk about tools and technologies you can use today to make your pipeline enabled with data lineage and metadata management. So number one type of tool that we are going to talk about are going to be open source tools. There are so many popular open source tools. The tool that we are going to deep dive on today is going to be Marquez, which uses an open source framework called Open Lineage. Marquez itself is also open source and it has a very detailed GitHub repository. So let's start by looking into that. By the way, these links are mentioned in the description. Let's talk about some of the features that it offers. So Marquez allows you to apply different types of tags in your data set. Using those tags, you can easily search and find the relevant tables. It also has a data graph. A dot represents a job and lines represent a data set. If I want to look at a lineage of a given report or a final data set, I can find it out by looking at this blue line which is easily discoverable by Marquez. Now let's talk about a scenario where a job failure happens. Marquez will highlight all affected parts. You can know which data sets and which jobs will be impacted. Let's take an example that uses both metadata and data lineage to fix a common problem that we get in our data pipelines. Let's say you are using a table called room bookings and the data source is in S3. You find it out first of all by searching that data set and figuring out where the data set is. When you click on that data set, you can get all the information like who is the owner, when is it updated, where is the location stored. Now you have the location, you know which roles you need access to, so you can just raise access for those roles. In our room bookings workflow, one job failed. Because of data lineage, you are able to find out what was that exact job and you can see the input and output data set of that job. Once you look at the input data set, you can figure out that schema has changed. So you can see instead of ID 1 before, it's now using ID 2. Upstream team changed the schema of the data, which is a very common problem, by the way. Uh, your pipeline is failing. Since you have visibility into schema versions, you can see what schema was it, you can figure out what was the change, and you can implement that change in the job that failed. Just redeploy that job, patch that job, and data lineage will make sure that automatically that fix is propagated to rest of the data sets and jobs. So with this example, you can easily understand what is the importance of data lineage and metadata. Now let's look at the GitHub repository of this project. You only open the repository, you'll be able to see it has some Docker commands that you need to run. But in the try it section, you can say open in Git pod. And that's all what you need to do. Just click on that button. It will basically create a virtual machine for you and if you link it with your LinkedIn account, you will get 50 hours of virtual machine usage every month for free. Uh, so if you want to try this tool out, I recommend doing that. You can just click there and it will automatically spin up all the Docker containers. So you don't have to run any command until this point. So when the Docker containers are spun up and it will show you an output that metadata exited with code zero, Again, refer back to the documentation. You can see that you can open web UI on localhost 3000. So 3000 is the port we are looking for. Now next is click on the ports and click on the port 300 URL. Git pod will automatically open that URL and uh, you will be able to see the web UI. You can see there are different sections like jobs, data set and search section for events. You can also directly search for jobs and data set. With the help of a single button, you have set up your entire Marquez instance. And once you've created your job, it might look something like this. Icons with settings, uh, they are the jobs, which are the transformations being applied. So if I click on that, you'll be able to see the SQL syntax exactly, which is being applied. You can see the parent data set, and you can see the Airflow DAG versions and everything on which uh, the orchestration is happening. If I click on the orders data set, this is our parent or source data set. You can see the column names, uh, column type and description. You can also look at the target data set that it generates. You can also see the version history of that data set. You can also figure out the column lineage which maps a column to a particular input which is often called source to target mapping. So it is as simple as that. Now as I said, this is one of the open source tools so you can try it out. But there are also other types of tools. One is like a commercial tool, something like Colibra on which you pay a license fees. It is like metadata management, data catalog across all of your cloud platform. So it doesn't matter whether my some of my data is sitting on AWS, some of them on GCP, it's, it's fine. Colibra can handle all of that. Apart from this, there are also cloud specific solutions like AWS Glue Data Catalog or GCP Dataplex, which helps you track everything like met metadata. It also tracks uh, the PII policies or tags and description and definition and much more. 
and most of these cloud tools are automatically scalable if you uh, have a lot of metadata a lot of operations down the line it will not be a problem uh, but it also comes with a little bit of an extra cost now let's talk about some best practices of data lineage number one thing is to start early whether you are new in your data engineering journey or whether you are a seasoned professional you have to think about data lineage very early on when you are designing your pipeline so that if something goes wrong you can easily figure it out using these different features it's also possible to implement this in an already built complex pipeline, but it is much more challenging to do so. So start early as possible. Number two is automate a lot of things. So as we saw that uh, by using tools like Marquez, you can automatically create different versions of jobs and data set. Number three, standardize. So you might have a lot of business or glossary terms. You need to standardize that across your uh, different tables and data sets. You cannot have different definition of a term in different two different data sets. Next thing is collaborate. It's not usually an effort that is done by one team. You cannot say that, oh, my team has data lineage and metadata implemented, so that's not a problem. It's their concern. No, most of the data systems are very complicated uh, because you, you might be using some other team's data and your team's data might be used by somebody else in the downstream systems. So it's very important that at an entire org level this change is implemented which is very challenging because a lot of teams are working in silo but you have to be able to collaborate to implement this so data lineage and metadata in today's world is no longer optional it can transform your data pipeline from a black box to a transparent well-governed and valuable assets and if you learn this skill early on in your career and put it on your resume it will be highly appreciated by any company you apply to because they know that you are following a best practice in the world of data engineering and who doesn't want to hire a person like that and that's about it i hope this video was useful i know that we talked a lot about different technical details or data details so if you have any questions any thoughts any comments feel free to drop it down below i would love to chat and as i said do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel see you next time